to all rate as the second cut of a second cut. So I had originally, because I, I do these end of the month hauls really early, not really early, but if I know that I'm not going to get any comics for the rest of the month, I do it when I get the last book. And that's what I did. I, and I showed off this. Like, first, I'll, I'll show off, like, I'll do a regular video, re regular comic haul. And then right after, I'll record another video of being the end of the month haul. So no matter what, I will always upload it the first. If I, unless I have a book. Unless I have a book. Unless I have something scheduled for the first of the month. Then I'll push it back. Or I, or I get another book that's coming in past then. I'll get, you know. Obviously, I can't upload it on the book in yet on the first of the month. Uh, the, the next month. But I'm almost positive I won't get another book this month. Anyways, so... I do these... So, I'll do it now. But I, uh... I didn't like how the first edition of the video came out. I felt like I was getting, like... Not too sidetracked. But it was kind of like... I was trying to explain something. And then it just kind of... I feel like it was... I, I didn't need to really explain it that much. You know, kind of one of those things. But... Without further ado, let's get into it. So the first book up, you've heard of Hellblazer, you've heard of Hellboy, you've maybe even ha heard of Hellsing, and Hellshock. Now there's another Hell book, and that is Hell City. By Makon Blair, with artwork done by Joe, Flo Joe Flood. And also you've heard of Sin City. So this one did seem to be similar to Sin City. Um, it was a private, like a... Um... So yeah, look, I was right. He's like trying to get it's like, it's set in hell, but it's like a private eye in hell. Kind of like you think your job's bad, your yours. Here's my job, kind of thing. Um, it, 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 it just seemed very interesting. But the main reason why I bought this book now, at first when I heard this was over three hundred pages, and I could get this for seven dollars used, like new, from a third party seller off Amazon. Which meant, and, and like shipped from Amazon, so it was two days shipping. That was like an immediate uh, diamond in the rough find. Now, I did not realize that, I did not notice until after I purchased it, this is much smaller, not much smaller, it was a small, smaller than the average image comic size, uh, trade paperback size. This is a, this is, it's bigger than a, your average novel size, but it's the, I, I think that's what they're trying to do, like, kind of be like a, I think this is your size, it's, it's actually a compare to a digest comic. It is just as big as a Marvel Digest. And sneak preview as to one of the books I'll be reading next time that I got from my library. I'm reading this again, so if those of you know, who know I've read this before will see that I've... I, I just, I kind of... Um, I guess I had that, I guess I wanted to read again. I don't know why, but I did. So it's just as big as your average Marvel Digest size. And I don't mind that completely. It's just kind of one of those things where I, I was really disappointed because I was like, oh, we're 300 pages. And I mean, still, this was still a steal because I would have had to pay $25 if this was from maybe 20 bucks to me, Amazon would be feeling generous that day. But the lowest Amazon would have gone is fifteen ninety nine, And I got this for $7, free Amazon shipping, and two-day shipping, too. So it was, it was awesome. It was awesome. It was a steal. Now, I got this from a third-party seller called the Bookhouse Boys. And they're, they're probably my favorites. I mean, I don't have a whole lot of third parties. There's not a whole lot of third-party sellers I get books from. At least, at least that, like, I... Like, yeah, sometimes, like, with Paper Girls, because I wanted to get it for 35 bucks, I got it off a third-party seller, but still off Amazon. So, it was still, like, two-day shipping out. Although, I think that one was three-day. I could be wrong. I don't exactly remember. But, point is, is that, uh, bo bo the Bookhouse Boys is probably one of my favorite third-party sellers off Amazon. They sell cheap books. Yeah, they're all used, and this one is probably used, it's just one should have said used very good. Because honestly, it's a used very good book that was, a, was a, that is in much better condition than this book is. And it's, it's just minor b bumps and stuff like that. And honestly, especially with this blemish right here, it could have been Amazon themselves. Because the way Amazon ships books, they don't like take too much care into shipping. Like, like comics don't take too much care into. Um, 
you have to get something with like like, like a DVD would be easy because it's, it's 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 in a case. So oh, w worst case the case is a little dinged, but the DVD inside is fine. Although even then, like the way that the disc is put into the disc, there's gonna put it like a little like the whole disc holder thing like, like that. Like it's rattling around in a truck, so maybe it gets a little scratched. But point is, and to be fair, Amazon isn't the worst. Like it could be a whole lot worse. But sometimes like, you get things like this. And this isn't this isn't too bad. Even this is shelfware, and shelfware is the number one thing that I do not get a single shit about because you could make the well because because the reason why that is is because i'm taking it off on and off my shelf um i have to, to, to flip to flip the artwork which I, which I like doing i like flipping the artwork of all my recently purchased books and usually just and honestly it's just been my whole entire image comic shelf at this point because as of today i was well, today as of my last comic purchase technically that whole first shelf is Filled to the brim with image comics, like all image comics. Now, I mean, I, I would say it, it not. It's not even to technicality because you know, I'll try and show it as best I can. So that shelf right there, it's more than that, but as as you can tell, but it's all that, like all that shelf is like all image comics. But I say I say it should even be a technicality because they're not all the same amount of. It's not all the same amount of books I fit like. One of them, it goes further down because the way that I have my shelf is I have the DVDs on top shelf, and those are a lot smaller than than, than comics are, so I have more room to fit books on the top shelf. So I do have all image comics because because the only is on the bottom shelves I have comics like going like this way, and then comics so it's like this, and I have comics like like this and like that. So this is on, it's like that, actually. So, no, it's not like that. You know, it's, it is, it is. It's like this. It looks weird. The way I'm, the way I'm doing it, it looks weird. And, and the comics, so it's, the comics are bigger, so on those bottom three shelves, um, is, is what I count as being a full shelf, like a full shelf space, you know? Because I can't, because it's, it's still, it's hard, it's, hard to, it's hard to explain without showing it, but let's move on. Because I, I don't think guys care. Basically, I'm saying like all my all that one part of that shelf or that half the shelf is all image comics, and, and that's what I was shooting for. That was my main goal, and the reason why it's image comics is because I have the best deal, uh, uh, the best luck with image comics, like the best books, like uh, the books that I like the most. Yeah, the first three are like it's uh, from DC Vertigo, like Preacher, Transmetropolitan, and Why the Last Man. But below that, there's a lot of image comics, like Walking Dead. Actually, Walking Dead I probably like a lot more than Transmetropolitan, so it probably takes second place, so everything goes down a peg. Um, and I'm, I am starting to, I will be next time, next time I show up, like next time I, the next set of library books I show off, one of them will be Why the Last Man. So time will tell why the last man goes up a peg. But it probably, but like Walking Dead, I really, I, I was thoroughly enjoying it. I'm rereading that, and it's been like such a joy, it's been such a, uh, nice, it's just an amazing comic to come back to. It's not always like a, it's not always a like a really um, fun comic. Obviously, there's a lot of hard hitting shit in that comic, but it's just like so damn investing. Like it keeps my interest like throughout, and, and just it's one of those comics that just gets better and better. You would think after issue one hundred they would lose steam, but no. If anything, it's gotten even better after issue one hundred. And it was already like spectacular, but and I, I I do I do remember like one thing I will give Walking Dead, and that's why it's not further up than it already is. One thing we'll give Walking Dead, I, I would say it's my third my third favorite comic of all time, maybe even fourth honestly, is because after I would say issue one fifty, it starts to lose steam. Like it ended at a pretty good part. Like I was kind of like, thank God we're doing that now. But it wasn't like a, it wasn't it was never arduous to get through each issue. It was kind of like they lost steam because the creator and writer Robert Kirkman said this is where the series ends. But it was so popular, I kept it going. So it was kind of like he, he it was supposed to end here, but he got more issues. And then eventually, even he was like, "Oh, I'm done." But then we had we have spinoffs too. I think it's a Clementine spinoff, which I think is going to be the same size as this book. All right, I am prattling on way too much. Let's move on. So yeah, written by Makon Blair with artwork done by Joe Flood. Now I'll show the artwork yet again. 
Yeah, ten ten minutes going over one book. I've gotta hurry up. I I, I prattle on way too much, I know. Uh Repulse, written by Simon Kudaransky and drawn by Simon Simon Kudaransky and there's no colorist because like with Hell City, this is also in black and white. And this one on the back here, it says, Can a robot remember his past life as a human? Right up my alley, I'm glad I got this. Now, why I say I'm glad I got this? Why am I, I, I like saying it kind of strangely? Well, this one and Existence 2.0 and 3.0, I got total $5 yet again off the Bookhouse Boys. Bookhouse Boys is like all my, all, it's like all the best parts of Wonder Book and why I pay more online, but. Unlike those two third party sellers, I get I get the advantage of getting them from Amazon Prime, so it's fast free shipping. Now the only issue I've had with any of these books, yeah this one's a little bent, is with existence 2.0 and 3.0. Cause there's the wire damage right here. It's just at the top and honestly there's only one page where it's really annoying and it's between these two pages right here they're stuck together and i have to really like do that but it's even then it's not a big deal for me oh there's a the, the page right here too but it's only off the top and the whole book like this is honestly this is what i expect to get when i get a used good book from amazon from a third party seller not off Amazon, just, just, just in general. Like, even from Wonder Book, I would expect to use the good book to be like this. But this is used very good, so now, now, now when I get a used very good book from the Bookhouse Boys, like, there was two that I got that were used very two more that I got that were used very good, I was afraid that there'd be, like, Existence 2.0 would be Dwar damaged. But they weren't. Spoilers. <laughs> now, this is written by Nick Spencer. With artwork done by Ron Salas and Joe Isma, with colors done by Frank Bravo. And this one collects Existence 2.0 1 through 3 and Existence 3.0 1 through 4. Now I'll show the artwork. I don't think it's like that. Now, with this one and the Zyman, I'm gonna say Zyman, it's a Zyman. Uh, with the Zyman, Z Z Z Z Z <laughs> even that's kinda hard to say. Like with this one in a Zyman Kudaransky book, I did break my rule of it's cheap enough, so I'm not gonna care about, oh, I don't have everything. This isn't the last one I needed from Nick Spencer from Image Comics. A uh, Zyman, te technically, it seems to be the case. The only ones he's done was Spawn. I never count Spawn because I'm probably never going to get into Spawn because of how many spinoffs there are. No matter how much I like that first compendium, there's just way too many spinoffs. And I'm like, I'm a completist. Even getting like, I, I'm a completist like with, like, oh, we need every author from that, that from Image Comics, everything that that author has done. Especially if I really like that author. Because why else would I have bought the book? But also, and so sometimes I'll say, no, I have the entire series of this book. That's why I got it, you know. There is one I, there is one that is on my wish list that I'm thinking of doing that with, but, I mean, time will tell. If I even go through with that. Like, like Invincible, I have all of Invincible. Not everything by Robert Kirkman, but I have all of that Invincible series. That's when I broke, I broke the rules. Pretty much just of how much there is from Robert Kirkman. Like, Robert Kirkman, it's like, he's done a lot. And I think even he forgets some comics he's written. Like you'll like you'll pick up a book and be like, "Hey, remember this?" Like I'd say I pick up. Um, I mean, this isn't a good example, but it's Super Dinosaur. And I bring that to him. I'm like, "Hey, remember that?" And be like, "Oh my god, I completely forgot I wrote that book." And like, I'll bet you if you go like way down deep into what he's written, and you pick up one that no one has ever talked about, even he will forget he's written the book. That's that's how much he's written for Image Comics. So that way, I don't link out. Like, Robert Kirkman, I don't think, that's a one exception. But Nick Spencer has not written a whole lot for Image Comics. I'm already almost done with what he's written. In fact. But Existence 2.0, 3.0 by Nick Spencer. Collecting, honestly, I, I would have I would have gotten this month, I, I got the rest of what I need for Nick Spencer. Except for the fact that I'm trying to dial down the amount of third-party seller books I get. Just because of the fact that I don't like waiting. 
pure and simple. But when it comes to birthdays and Christmas time, because I have to, I have to wait when I order the books, when I can open the books, it's like, might as well get books from third party sellers and save some money, or at that point, get more books. But this one looks pretty. It, it, it is uh, Nick Spencer too, so I, so I know I will like it. But yeah, again, because it was I got this for three bucks, and then uh, the Zyman book for two fifty. I was like, I actually didn't care. And then here's the artwork yet again. And I know I just showed it off, but showing it off again. So sometimes they will break that, admittedly stupid rule. The next one up is Kill the Minotaur. This is one that I had seen advertised. So this is by Sky Skybound Image, which they I'll put. I'll show this on the back here. I love when they do this. Yeah, I don't have most of these books, but I do own. So I'm, I'm just gonna stay with the art because I can't really show it. Um, it's Extremity, which I don't own. Green Valley, which I do. Birthright, which I do. Manifest Destiny, I only have the first volume of. Outcast, which I own. And then Redneck, which I don't. And I say when I own, I mean I own the entire series, which I say so I own all ten volumes of Birthright. I own the only hardcover, so only one volume uh, of Green Valley. I own all eight volumes of Outcast, but Outcast is in compendium form. Um, but Skybound's image, I think it's Robert. Yeah, yes, it's Robert Kirkman's imprint. Speaking of Robert Kirkman, I don't know why they have an imprint, but nevertheless they do. And this is written by Chris Vassetto and Christian Cantamassa, who are the co-writers of Red Dead Redemption. Or it just says writers, I think. Like in the, in the uh, parentheses. So it's, it just it doesn't even say co-writers. And then the artist of Witch Doctor, and another Skybound image book that I do own. Louis Kettner is the artist. And Jean-Francois Below, Below is the colorist. And this book is... Like with, an, with another image comics fantasy comic is based off of a uh, it's based off of mythology. It's an actual it's a tale as old as time and then but uh, Christian Kentamessa and Chris Bassetto are giving their own interpretation of the original myth. I don't know what actual I don't know what it's actually called but it's a Minotaur myth like it's Minotaur myth it's a Minotaur myth. Um, like, they're, they're fighting the Minotaur, and then it's... This one, so this, I'm going to read this one is about, because it is very similar to a, to a Netflix movie. I, it's coming out the first week in March, actually. The first weekend in March. That I'm very excited to watch. And I had a stupid, uh... The stupid... Free, freebie service they give you for, uh... If you have, like, eight... Uh, if you have T-Mobile... But T-Mobile, uh, Netflix cheaped out, and you know, like T-Mobile users, yeah, you get the you get, you're a shittiest service ever, and you can't even get all what's on here. Like it's like, it's like at least three that I've that I've counted that I can't watch. Like Happy, I can't watch. It's like it's not supporting the ad supported plan. It's really dumb. It could, it could honestly, it's probably not even Netflix's fault. It's probably just the distributor's fault because of my theory is because like say for instance, one of them I can't watch is. The new Spider Verse movie. So Sony is probably like, yeah, we want more money because you're getting the more expensive plans. So I think more some of that money goes to the distributors. That's that's how Netflix is able to pay the distributors to have their movies on their on their streaming platform. I think, and that's why they do the cheapest plan. They're like, no, we don't want we don't want that money. You know, we want the more expensive money. I, I I don't know. Even that seems like a crackpot theory, but that's what I think. So this one is Athens what lost lost Athens lost the war to Crete, or Crete, not it's Crete. Uh, now Athens pays tribute to King Minos by sacrificing their best citizens to his unearthly labyrinth. So it's that kind of uh, story. If those of you who want to know what the myth I meant by Mintar myth. Now this does remind me a lot of Netflix movie Damsel. They sacrifice the damsel. To the monster, so it's kind of it kind of, it's similar. I honestly wonder if they were uh, inspired by the Mantar myth. It's entirely possible. It's dragons instead of Mantars. There's the artwork yet again. Just taking charge of an off. And this one, sorry, this one collects all six issues of this mini series for nineteen ninety nine. But this is one hundred and eighty four pages according to Amazon. It kind of justifies his twenty his twenty buck cover price, and it was worth it for me because I I got the last copy of off Amazon. 
And this is one of those, like, technically, like, like I said, oh, like a paper girl. So I got a third party stuff because I wanted cheap, yeah, 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 yeah. But this one, like, more so, it's, it's like, it's, it's so, uh, the Bookhouse Boy is surprising enough. It was shipped and sold by them. I don't know how they got Amazon free shipping. Maybe they're, like, a, a third, like, I mean, like they're, maybe they're connected to Amazon more. I, I don't know. But this one is sold, uh, shipped by Amazon, but sold by, it was a different publisher. A different publisher, a different seller. But I don't remember what it was. Because these ones, I don't keep track of, because it's still the same price. If this, if this one was, like, ten bucks, hell yeah, I would have kept it. I would have I told you guys what the third party selling was. But this was full price. Now, it was the last copy. And now, now you have to get, the, now you can't get anything off Amazon. You have to get it from a third party seller, which is fine. Like, most of you guys... Most of you, most of my audience is fine with um, waiting longer, because most of you guys don't ship, don't shop on Amazon, which I, I don't blame you. But like this book came, came in perfect condition, no, no real blemishes. I, I did notice one though. What was the one I noticed? This one guy, right here, this right here, just a little bend right there, but it's that's not, it's not anything, and it's just on the, just on the that like, cover. On the book itself, there's no bends. But Kill the Minotaur, 1 through 6. Let's get it. Yeah. Kill the Minotaur. Then we have yet yeah, another book, House Boys Book Gaffers. This one I got for $7. Used. Very good. And you can tell what the blemish here is. It's bent. Now, I do have it on the top shelf. And on the top shelf, it is like super squeezed. Like, it is like barely any barely any breathing room as i call it and that's how how i like my books on my shelf especially for books like this so i can instead of being like this i can be like this like how it's supposed to be right now i can like you can already tell it's starting to get back to its original to its original shape as if you will and this one is written by scott reed with artwork done by shane white and this one right here right here uh, this one says, a hired killer fights to stop an apocalyptic union of mankind's and machine. He will fail. I I do like sci-fi. Um, sci-fi, I like with fantasy. I'm pretty open to to the storylines that like sci-fi has, like, like robot kind of books. Yeah, I'll, I'll pick up those. Uh, ones that's like more like introspective or it takes place in space, like with uh, The Martian or Blade Runner. That is like right up my alley because the Blade, Blade Runner was like like one of those underrated movies I think everyone should watch. And I've got to watch that again and and its sequel. The sequel I haven't watched mainly because of how long it is, but that's like that shouldn't be an excuse, honestly. Honestly, with how much I like the first one, at two hours and forty five minutes will probably feel like two hours and fifteen minutes, if that. Um. So. I used to do that. I don't know why I just did that. Um, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was like reading the book. I was like, wait, why do I gotta do that? No, I chose the artwork. This is the artwork. Now, this is what I mainly got, like with Hell City, I mainly got because how cheap it was. But it also was up my alley. And also, Scott Reed is one of those names that I'm like, I vaguely remember that name from some, some comics I read. But I couldn't tell you off the top of my head which one, which one, which one, which one, which one I read by him. He did a Thanos book, but it's not, it, it wasn't, I didn't, <laughs> it was, I didn't, I knew I haven't read that one. So, the art, okay, wait, how many, it's, oh, sorry, it's, this one collects five issues of the Overman. All five issues of the, of the Overman. The next one is Black Harvest, which is written and drawn by Josh Howard. This is yet again bent, yet again used very good, yet again from the Bookhouse Boys. Now this one was one that I had seen, so I foolishly believed that on Valentine's Day I would get a gift card from, from Amazon for 25 bucks. I'd gotten that two years ago, and I just, ever since then I've been like, oh, I might. And it, to, be, to be fair, this year they were talking about, they were talking about, like, gift cards, like, that was in the conversation, but it, it wasn't like... Even then, I should have known it wasn't. It was going to be for me and the, and the rest of the family, but and I, mean, I, I still got what I got for uh, Valentine's Day. I can't like Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day, you know, and that's whatever. Valentine's Day is not like Christmas or birthdays in this household. I've always known that, so I've always been fine with it. But 
I prematurely was like, okay, we're gonna get this book, I'm gonna get this book. And this one was what I was gonna get, but yet again, this is not all of what Josh Howard did for Image Comics. This one collects one through six of Black Harvest. Which is really funny because this one collects five, so you would think these two would be switched. This would be five issues and this would be six issues. But it's not, it's actually the other, uh, other way around. And we'll definitely show the artwork for this comic. And what was, was, was a very patient show. So I do want to, there's a point I want to make and there's like, one of the perfect pages to show. I don't know. This one. So right here, this artwork. It reminds me a lot of, this is, yeah, another, yeah, another sneak preview of the books I'll be getting for this week from, uh, this week. The next, next books I'll be reading for, next few books I'll be reading, library books, yeah. Books very similar in, to, uh, Josh Howard's artwork, a lot similar to me, very similar to me to Michael Avon Oman's artwork. Kind of has that same, like, cart overly cartoony style. It's actually right here. The reason why I... And once in, so, I was kind of skeptical when I saw the artwork. Um, it's more, more the next one I'll be showing. I was very skeptical to get this one. So this one is... Like, this one just has to do with paranormal. So, um, I'm going to read the, again, read the first part of the plot synopsis. In the small town of Jericho, Texas... A yearly phenomenon known as the Jericho Lights brings tourists and UFOs and UFO enthusiasts from miles around. In the last days of fall, the lights appear in the skies just outside of town and remain for six days before vanishing again. So it's like a paranormal kind of conspiracy kind of book. Right up my alley, I like a cult. I like like paranormal kind of books, horror. It's probably more up my alley, way far more up my alley than any other, um, here's another, so you can get two pages of artwork. Uh, it's probably more at my alley than sci-fi is. And the next Josh Howard book I got, and this is the only two, is the of two, the last of what he's done for Image Comics. And this is Dead at 17, The Complete Collection. Now those who saw the video when I showed this off will know that I got, it's very hard to do, two copies. And that was because I was able to keep the original from uh, uh, the original. Uh, I got a replacement for the book, and Amazon. The one thing they will I will give Amazon is that they're better at with any others, any other place is that they will let you keep the if you bitch and moan to them. That's an exaggeration, but it's bitch and moan to them. They will give you away. They will let you keep the replacement. You do have to go off their customer service. You have to talk to you to, talk to, a, to a real person, but if you. You be, and you don't do it often. Oh, often. You don't do it often enough, and you're like, like, like a. Like a it's a, everyone, everyone besides my sister gets uh, used my mom's account, and that's been active since 2003. So she's been with them for a long ass time. So they are like, yeah, we don't want to lose you as a customer, so we'll get let you keep the, um, as long as you don't keep doing this, we'll let you keep the original, the original copy. Now this one right here. So this is is this the original copy or is this the placement copy? This is the original copy. And there was no real, like, terrible blemish. It's just, like, this little bend here that does show off the, on the book itself, as you can see right here. It's a small bend. And then there was this thing here that I noticed. One of those things I just, like, the more I looked at it, the more blemishes I noticed. And then I think this did show off here. Yeah, like, very, very small, though. Very small blemishes, but it was kind of like, you know what? If I can get a replacement and keep the original book, well, why not do that? So this one collects all seven volumes of this series. Now, the first six issues are all... Six issues. The first six volumes of this series are all four-issue miniseries. And that is... Issues one through four of Dead 17. It, it, volume one is just called Dead 17. Then, Blood of Saints, Revolution, 13th Brother, Afterbirth, the Witch Queens, and The Witch Queen, all four issue main series, all four issues, and then the Blasphemy Throne was seven vol was seven issues for that volume. Now, yet again, I'll show the artwork, but I'm going to do this very sparingly, 
So I hope you guys can see it. So when I saw that artwork, I was like, oh, it's not my, not exactly my favorite type of artwork. But once I realized, once I kind of noticed, I was like, oh, it's kind of similar to uh, Michael Avon Omen's artwork. It kind of was like, it, it, it kind of, I didn't care as much anymore. It's kind of like, okay, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it now. And, and Josh Howard, just in general, um, his, a big reason why I decided to cave in and purchase it is because of the fact that, I, I don't know how I went from his Amazon page to his Twitter page, but I did, and he's followed by a lot of the same people I follow, like comic book YouTubers and comic book, uh, creators and comic book, like, just comic book fans on Twitter. And it's like, okay, if they, if they, if they like his work, then I'll probably like his work too. It's kind of one of those things that was a lot of them. It wasn't just one or two, but it was a lot. And it was those people that are, like, a lot more picky about comic books now. So, it's one of those things where it's like, okay, that's no-brainer. And if I... There's a lot of comics that I like. If I like almost everything that's come out come out of New, New 52 from DC and and likes more as a guilty pleasure but still likes Aspar, All-Star Batman, All Batman and Robin, I'll probably take this one. So, this one is the replacement. And I noticed this last night, and this is one of the, things, one of the reasons why I wanted to re redo and yeah uh oh now i did tape this originally so if you can you know almost see where i taped it because it's kind of showing like a, almost like a as you if you will like a shadow not just like a, like a, it's like a run, runoff kind of thing like you, get, you can see in almost like, a, in, almost like an indent um it, it's kind of hard to show off on here which is a good, which is a good thing which is a good thing um but i took that pa to tape off cause I, and i was gonna tape it better because i was like hey, i got a huge amount of tape on it i was like no i want to do a small one tape but once i took that off i was like hey if i open it like like so i don't open it all the way you can't even see it and I, I mean, you're not gonna open it past what i call like like this part of the book like it's more more it's easier to show off here like this part right here you don't open it past this. Like, at least I don't think you do. So it, it, it's not going to affect it at all. And it's just such a small tear. But it's like, to be the replacement copy that I got. And to have it be in technical... Te 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 and for it technically to be in worse condition than the original version is kind of annoying. So that one, takes, so it's all seven volumes. I show the artwork. It's at seventeen. A uh, dead at seventeen is uh, so it's a lot. It's actually something a lot similar to Wayward. Um, this person dies and then they come back to life to and they fight a bunch of like supernatural beings, like monsters. This, this one was more demons. This one, this one more more took more or less took place in hell. So it is kind of like it's like Wayward meets Exorcist or kind of thing. If you if you if you showed if you if you know when I showed that off that extra sisters book or when they reviewed it because that was that was one of those one of the many books I I'll get uh, I try to get at least one per month of the books I've read previously at my, at my local library but I liked it so much I bought myself now for May there's gonna be a lot of them and so all the ones I couldn't get this month and it's gonna be a lot of like I sort of like this book I I, I liked it enough but. It's gonna be like like it's like very um what do they call it? like like borderline borderline. I like this book and now I'm gonna, now I'm gonna purchase it you know kind of thing. All right, it's getting late, so let's go. See, let's keep going. Now already thirty three minutes. Okay, Invincible Universe Compendium One. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna show. I'm not gonna say even. There's a lot of creative talent that comes behind. That comes behind. It's a lot of creative talent that writes this book. Now, unfortunately, I can't do any. This is a big book. I cannot. Eh, let's try. Like that. There you go. That's as close as I can get. Okay. This one collects Invincible Presents Adam Eve 1 through 2. Invincible Presents Adam Eve and Rex Flow 1 through 3. Those keen uh, eagle eyed viewers who've been, who've been here for a long time will know that I already had that Adam and Eve Invincible Presents uh, trade. Then we have Guarding the Globe 1 through 6, Guarding the Globe 1 Volume 2, 1 through 6, and Invincible Universe 1 through 12. All of which I obviously have not owned before. Now this is officially the last of what I need from that they count at least of what I need for Invincible. On on uh, Wikipedia, it's all of what I need. I got a companion which collects all of the trade paperbacks, the original trade paperbacks like this does. 
and collects all the original trade paperbacks of all the issues of Invincible, and this is all the spinoffs. Now, um, and even on, so there's a Hard Attack book that just came out with a new printing, and that's the printing that I have, like the new printing that comes out with, actually has more book in it, has more stories in it, because it has six additional issues that they weren't able to write, that they weren't able to write, they weren't able to release as floppy, so they just put it in that, in that big trade, that big thick trade. That one on the back, it, it advertises all of Invincible, it's, it's, yet, it's yet another Image Skybound book, and they advertise Invincible on the back, uh, along with a bunch of other trades. And even then, I have all of what I need for Invincible. Yeah, there's an Invincible, there's an official handbook of the Invincible universe, but I don't count that. I, I, I don't, I'm never gonna own an, a handbook, because I, I don't need a handbook. I'll just look it up online if I need to. And here is the artwork for Invincible. What the, art, what the artwork looks like. Two more. So I did that. So yeah. So uh, Invincible Univ Invincible Universe. I just I just wanted like that one because that was the last. Okay, that was kind of like so. Guardian Guardian the Globe is a Guardians the Globe, uh, their series. And I was kind of like, okay, they're they're, they're obvious. The Guardians of the Globe is featured in, featured in the Invincible TV show. So. Before I watch the TV show, I want to at least own the comics. So once I finish watching the show, all two seasons are out right now, or one and a half seasons. But honestly, by the time I finish, by, by the time I finish what's out right now, I believe that at least, at the very least, the first episode of season two, part two, will be out. Um, maybe maybe even longer than that. But I did want that at least. I, once I once I finish that, I will. Then jump on the comics. Mainly because I don't want it to be in a Walking Dead situation or a Preacher situation, where with how much I like those comics, as I've mentioned already, as I went into, as I went to insanely. I I I explained the beginning of the video. I'm trying to say like other ones are again same like like fine detail kind of thing, but I there's no way to say that without saying stupid, but. Uh, they're different. They're Walking Dead is different. The TV show is so different than, than the comics that I wouldn't. I don't want to watch TV shows. Like, a lot of what the TV show does different from the comics. It's like why change that to the comics? That it was a perfectly set in the comics. It would have been, been more hard hitting. Do it like they did in the comics, but you didn't. You kind of wussed out of anything. Uh, one one major difference I noticed. And I saw a clip of this. Is that Carl doesn't she doesn't kill uh, Shane. Rick does, and. It's, like the whole point was that it was such a hard hitting thing because it showed that Carl would do anything to protect to protect his father because he just got his father back because that was that was the first volume so he just got his father back from that from the coma he was in and he's alive and everything so he'll do anything to to protect his father. So one of those things where it's like you completely and to be fair the no I I I was gonna say oh the. It left off of, like, the, it cut off where the ending would have shown, but no, he, he does kill him. Maybe he come, maybe he he's not actually dead, but I, no, he comes back as a zombie and he kills him. I swear that's what happens. I saw, I saw, I saw, I saw, I saw a clip of it. But, and then there's, like, um, a lot more changes that people don't like that have read the comics. So, to not have that bias, I do want to watch the Invincible TV show before I get into the Invincible comics. Anyways, I'll te technically I have read the first four issues, but that was a long time ago. And that was like way back in the day. I think it was like in, like maybe like maybe sophomore year of high school, if that, maybe even before that, honestly. But anyways, next book up is The Fall, written and drawn by Jeremy Moralt. Now this one is very European comics inspired. Seems to be, anyways. The way that they said it's a, it's a um, album sized prestige plus format, which I think is ma ma magazine format, which I believe this is what this is what in, uh, European comics are. They're like their um, default format, like how comics is like how American comics, their default size, at least, like, they, how, how tall the book is. This is their average size, not obviously not as thick, but as tall, height wise. I believe this is their average size, like length and height. Which is, I think, yeah, it's bigger. It is taller and wider than your average image comic, than your average comic size. 
as you can tell. And this one does collect all six issues of the fall. And this one they said was very similar in the in theme and feel to Walking Dead. It was like Walking Dead. Here, this is it right here. Uh, the Fall of Volume One, an, an apocalyptic adventure akin to Robert Kirkman's The Walking Dead, with the emotion of Cormac Mac McCarthy's The Road. So this is like a family surviving an apocalypse, surviving an apocalypse, and the father doing anything to protect his to protect his family in this apocalyptic world. This is only sixteen ninety nine. I got this for six ninety nine off uh, off Wonder Book, which I again my favorite overall third party seller, and they are pretty quick too. Like I ordered it on Sunday and I got it Friday. Now, last but certainly not the least is two copies of Beowulf, yet again because they let me keep the original copy. And the original copy, to be fair, had a lot of blemishes. You had this, this, which, and, and to be fair, like, even this blemish, it only shows on the first, like, I would say 10 pages, and, like, issue, in pages 7 to 10, it was, like, less and less of this blemish. You, you can, it was less and less noticeable, because it went away, so to speak. Then you had this, I, I just noticed this, too, it was bunched up. A lot of blemishes on this book. Um, and I, 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 I didn't even, I didn't mind it too much, but for a book like this, I remember thoroughly enjoying, and it was very prominent for me, I wanted to get it. So this is, this is, this is the book that I have, that library have, I like it so much that I bought it myself. Now, and then, the, and then here's the, um, replacement copy, which is a lot better. There's a little tear here. But it does not show on the actual, it's not the actual page coming apart, it's just like, it's, you know, it's whatever. It's a little ding there. Now, um, I'll show, I'll show the artwork. This is written by Santiago, Santiago Garcia with artwork done by David Rubin. It is, this is an original graphic novel, it's all in one. And this is the classic Beowulf tale that's inspired so many writers like J.R.R. Tolkien, classic fantasy writers like J.R.R. 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 Tolkien, like the original Beowulf, that says, Beowulf, for those you don't know, is like the first book ever, ever written. So there's been multiple adaptations. Then film adaptation, which I got the film, and another Beowulf. Um, so I'll show off another little sneak preview. There is, that I got from my library, another comic book adaptation of Beowulf. And then you have the movie. So yeah, a little sneak preview of that. And that, as I say, is that. Ten comics, technically twelve, with the two, co two comics of the same book that I got. Um, so Beowulf, like I said before. Um, I, I showed everything off. Those, those, those guys who don't want to, like... Hear me prowl on about shit. Can leave now, but I, I do want to mention this. I do feel like it's worth mentioning. So Beowulf, back in back in July, I went to a comic book store, in I, I went away on vacation and they had a comic book store in my area and in, in that area that we were staying at, and it was called Books a Million. And Books a Million was like night. That was like the best comic book bookstore for me. That was a bookstore that just having just having to sell graphic novels. And the first time I went there, it was a different one, and it was like finding a diamond in the rough, like the the most expensive, um, worth uh, war. I don't want to say worthless, but the most like pr priced like you find a diamond and you're rich. Like I, I struck it rich at that's all, all I should have said. I struck it rich at that comic book store. They had so many cl uh, so many coins for cheap. I just bought off there. Bargain bin section. I, I was the only. That's all I. I all I spent my money on, and the one I went to, the next one I went to was a different. Yeah, different books a million. And that was like, they didn't care. They were like, he, he, here's some graphic novels. This is random ass graphic novels. Yeah, we'll have some volume ones, but here's some random ass graphic novels. One of the ones they had was Beowulf. I almost bought it there, but I've been the only book I bought there. I was like, no, 
And this is this is back in back in the days where I didn't care. Um, I, I didn't do the old oh, library has and now I have it kind of thing. Rare exception, rare exception. I would do that, and that was only if they had, they didn't have all three volumes of a series. Like, like Middle West, they didn't have all three volumes, so I got I got all three volumes, even they had the first two. So I was like, you know what, I want Mitchell Love. That was the only time I'd do that. And Beowulf, they had all of it at what was it, like one volume. They had all of it at my local library, so I got it there. But nowadays, I'm like, no, I want it. And I, it's just for Image Comics so far. Um, I I want to own it myself. That kind of thing. But that, as I say, is that I have gone on for too long. This is 45 minutes. I got, I can get some reading done. That's it.